Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my master thesis presentation, which is, the, uh, which is titled Heterologous Expression of Chromo and Fluorescent Proteins in the Green Algae Clamiomonas reginati to evaluate their impact on photosynthesis and growth rates. So this is the order in which I'll carry out my presentation, starting by a quick overview about the, about the background of the study. So we know that the chromo and the fluorescent proteins are are homologous proteic family with the gel, with the jellyfish green fluorescent proteins, and that's why altogether they are known as GHP-like proteins or GHP-like pigments. Also, they are known to be responsible by the for the bright coloration of some coral, coral reef organisms, such as sponges, anemones, corals, among others. In contrast to the fluorescent proteins, the chromoproteins are, are able to absorb, to give a strong colors that are visible by the by the naked eye, and they produce very low or non fluorescence at all. Additionally, they are known to be invaluable tools in, bio, in biological research as in vivo molecular markers for the for intracellular detection, for the plate level plate level screening of transformants and molecular labeling among other applications. And very importantly, these proteins are able, I mean, they present a very diverse light energy absorption and emission spectra that is known to be different than the ones observed for the native pigments of some photosynthetic organisms, such as the chlorophylls and the carotenoids, due to the fact that their absorption maxima ranges in the non-photosynthetically active regions which correspond to the green and the yellow regions of the visible light. Now I would like to introduce the model organism that we employed for the heterologous expression of the proteins. So this is a green microalgae whose mitochondrial, chlor chloroplast, and nuclear genomes are sequenced and ready for, tra for transformation. This algae presents a rapid growth and it has served as a mother, mother organism for Odell algae and for photosynthesis for decades in both basic and applied research. Now I would like to focus on the research questions of my project. So we have that despite the fact that biotechnology in algae has heavily relied in the use of fluorescent protein or fluorescent reports, Include, including the, the chromoproteins, the photosynthetic and the growth capacity of the host organisms has not been tested when these proteins are being expressed. So our objective was to express eight chromoproteins and five fluorescent proteins in the algal chloroplast to see if this might lead to a change in the absorption or in the photosynthetic uh, capacity of the algae since these proteins are absorbing and emitting light at different wavelengths. So is this is the expression of the proteins presenting a fitness advantage or representing a fitness cost for the algal cells? In terms of the results, this is the set of proteins that we employed for, for the transformation of the algae with the respective source organism, which includes anemones, a, a, sponges and the bioluminescent jellyfish. The following are the approaches that we employed in order to achieve our objective, the preparation for Anastasia coli. This method is employed to generate working quantities of the coli with the subsequent extraction of the plasmid from the bacterial cells and the preparation for the fortune transformation of the host organism. So the transgene was transformed and was expressed in the nuclear genome of, of Chlamydomonas and the localization of the protein that was expected to be was inside of the chloroplast thanks to the presence of a target peptide that was originally present in the, in the plasmid. The presence and the, and the expression of the protein was confirmed using Western blood. For this procedure, 16 random transformants of each plasmid were employed, and the transformants that were showing the strongest band intensity in the Western blood, which corresponds to, the, to a higher proteic expression, were selected to further physiological analysis, and they also correspond to the three biological replicates of each plasmid. Now, in terms of the photosynthetic capacity, we first took into account the FBFM, 
which correspond to the maximum quantum efficiency of photosystem to photochemistry. So here I would like you to focus in this sequence. This represents a, a sequence to, I mean, here there is a sample that is being submitted to increasing light intensities after a period of dark adaptation. And the FBFM ratio takes into account the maximum and the minimum fluorescence that is recorded in that period of darkness. And it could serve as an indicator of the primary photosynthetic performance of the photosystem too. Uh, in dark adapted samples. And the photosystem 2 is a light harvesting, harvesting complex that is present in the photosynthetic reaction center and it, it is responsible for the primary for, uh, for the primary reactions for photosynthesis. Now here we for the FVFM values recorded for for the chromoprotein strains here we can see their respective biological replicates and the control, which is the parental strain. So in general, we observed that there was not significant differences in the BFM ratios between the between our transformants and or control, showing highly consistent values around 0 0.8, which corresponds to the logical state for chlamydomonas. In terms of the physiological relevance of this observation, we can say that there is not a significant effect in the maximum efficiency at which the absorbed light is used for the reduction of the quinone electrode receptor of PH2. And as you can see here, this is one of the primary reactions that are driving photosynthesis once the light has been captured. And therefore, one can suggest that uh, the reaction centers of the transformants are able to efficiently do photochemistry when exposed to light regardless of the presence of heterologous proteins inside of the chloroplast. Okay, the second parameter that we that we measured to have as a proxy of the photosynthetic capacity of the algae was the relative electron transport rate. This is a relative measure of electron transport that is taken into account when, uh, by measuring the, the in vivo fluorescence of chlorophyll, of chlorophyll A at increasing light intensities, and it corresponds to the number of, of electrons that pass through the photosynthetic chain, and it is relative to the light intensity at which the sample is being treated. <coughs> in order, uh, so by having different modifications in the wavelengths, we will expect a change in these RETR values. And this, in order to calculate this parameter, one has to take into account the quantum yield of photosystem 2 in light adapted samples. And this corresponds to the proportion of light that is absorbed by the chlorophyll that is being used for photosynthesis multiplied by the light intensity of interest. So this parameter can be, could be calculated at any point throughout the sequence. Now, here, in, we can observe the RETR values of both the chromo and the fluorescent protein strains. And all the genotypes, you can see them with the respective biological replicates. And as you can see, all of them were subjected to increasing light intensities. And the horizontal bar represents the highest value that was recorded for, for the control. So in general, we observe divergences in the photosynthetic phenotypes of, of the RET, in, in, in the RETR between the transformants expressing the chromoproteins in green and the transformants expressing the fluorescent proteins in blue. So in general, we can say that we can note that the RETR values of the chromoprotein strains at increasing light intensities, specifically at 131 and above, than the RETR values observed for the control, which is the parental on the left. In the contrary, all the fluorescent protein strains show very similar or lower RETR values at, again, at increasing light intensities than the one observed for the controlled and for the chromoproteins. So for the uh, physiological relevance of these observations, for the case of the fluorescent proteins, we can say that the presence of the, fluoro of the fluorescent proteins could have caused more stress at higher light intensities because it is possible that these proteins are channeling photons into functional wavelengths for the photosynthesis of the algae, and this could have caused the saturation of the photosynthetic chain. 
and the consequent lower RETR values. Here we can see an example of one of our fluorescent proteins, Scarlet, which is able to give off red light. And this is one of the functional wavelengths for the, for the algae to do photosynthesis. And we can observe lower RETR values at increasing light intensities than the one observed for the control. Additionally, there has been some reports that some fluorescent proteins are able to generate oxidants in response to light when the photons are not properly emitted to fluorescence. And these genetically encode photosynthesizers, which corresponds to the fluorescent proteins, and as reported by Trewin in 2018, are able to produce singlet oxygen and superoxide upon illumination. For the case of the chromoprotein strains, our results of higher RET values at higher light intensities, as we can observe for these examples, support the idea that the chromoproteins might have photoprotective properties in the algae, as these activities have been reported before in the, in the coral hosts. For instance, in 2013, Smith showed that the screening by the chromoproteins lead to a reduction in the chlorophyll excitation because the chromoprotein expression in, in was able was correlated with reduced photo damage under, under acute lighting, uh, light stress in the coral acropora valida. We finally perform a qualitative growth test with the genotypes, including the control, and they were grow under and phototrophic conditions in both control and high light. <clears throat> okay, so in this slide we can see the qualitative growth test with different dilution, uh, different dilution droplets on agar plates with and without a, a, a source of carbon. And these are some representative results of three of the chromoprotein strains. So in general, we observe that in high light conditions, at least two transformants within each of the chromoprotein strains were showing a better growing behavior than the one observed for the parental, which, which you can see at the bottom of each of the plates. And this could be correlated with the higher RETR values that we observed at increasing light intensities and that were previously mentioned for the, for the chromoproteins. And this trend was, we, we also observed it under control-like conditions, although in a lower extent, and especially in mixotrophic conditions where there is acetic acid. Finally, to conclude, first, we have that the highly consistent FBFM values among the majority of the strains suggest that the cells are photosynthetically active and healthy. Second, higher RETR values under increasing light intensities observed for the transformers expressing the chromoproteins suggest that these proteins might have a photoprotective role. Third, under high light, the chromoprotein genotypes seem to grow better in both media compared to the control. However, it is important to highlight that the evidence level of this research is restricted to two photosynthetic parameters and a qualitative growth test and that this should be further expanded to other physiological measurements with an increased number of individuals and uh, quantitative assessments. Finally, for the significance of the study, we have that the bioengineered microalgal strain higher photosynthetic efficiencies under stressful and highly variable light conditions, like the ones that we observe in algal systems, are needed in the field of microalgal-based biotechnologies. And in this, in this research, although further studies are needed to corroborate our findings, the chromoproteins might be further exploited to enhance the growth of bioengineered algae under high or, or extreme light conditions. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to listening to your questions.